Here I am in Reedsville. Got a dump right here. It's not very big. It might take only four hours to dig the whole thing out. I'm walking in the woods here in Reedsville, finding some milk bottles. This one was laying on top of the ground. Probably a pretty common one, but it's always exciting to find an embossed milk on top of the ground. And here's another one with the creamer top. And it's from Greensboro. I've never seen this particular bottle before. Hopefully it's valuable. Then a grape bola. Maybe a five or six dollar bottle. No city on the bottom. And a Sprite bottle. Sort of. Used to have a label on it. Oh. There's a nice old fashioned gas station on the outskirts of Draper, North Carolina. That's a pretty nice sign there. I went to Granddaddy's Antique Mall in Burlington and saw this bottle and I didn't have this variant. It said $48 on it and I thought that looked like a pretty good deal to me. It's nice blown in the mold and it says Carolina Bottling Company. I consider that to be worth at least 90 or 100 then I bought a Tika Cola. It's from Richmond. Old Dominion Bottling Company. The Pepsi Company sued this company out of existence. Then they actually took the time to grind off the word Tika Cola off of each four sides. So most of these are actually grounded down. And they're in the book for $25 to $35. So what would one that still has the embossing be worth? Should be worth more. And I got it for seven dollars, so I thought that was a pretty good deal. Old Dominion. It's not in the perfect condition. It's got a big scuff mark right there. But other than that, it's definitely worth more than seven dollars. Then I saw this at the same antique mall. I've never seen one before. It was three dollars, so I figured I'll pick it up, but then later on the other side of the store I saw at least a dozen more. But still, I'm sure I can sell it for five or six. And then I saw this. It's a good looking whiskey. It's from Boston, which isn't too good, but for ten dollars it looks like a good deal to me. And then in Granddaddy's I also picked up this green 10, 2, and 4 Supposedly people in Texas were paying up to $45 a piece for these about 10 years ago. It's kind of a transitional bottle. They didn't make that many of them. So when I saw it for $7, I figured probably I could double my money at least. Then I went to an antique mall in Gibsonville. Bought this. It's a small 6.5 ounce and it's sparkling mint with no caseware. It was $4. I'm sure it's worth at least eight in that condition. And then I bought this. It says oyster on it. It was being sold as an oyster jar. I'm not really sure if it is or not, but a purple slick plated milk that's embossed for five dollars. Can't go wrong no matter where it's from. Just going to turn it purple for a while and probably sell it for eighteen or twenty dollars. And then I Got a lot of writing on the back of it. That's because it's not an American bottle, it's from the Philippines. So, I thought that was rather unique for six dollars. Then I went to the only antique mall left in Reedsville. Saw this, I guess it's some kind of a water bottle. It's turning a little bit purple though. I always love to pick up light purple stuff and Darken it up a bit and sell it for more. It was only four and a half dollars. It's an amber 12 ounce or just like the way it looked because you don't see amber drugstore bottles very often. And I probably did pay too much in most people's opinion. I paid six dollars for this one. And then I went to a flea market and found quite a lot of bottles. 
I've never seen this one before. It's blown in a mold, honey amber. Nice script embossing. It was five dollars. And this jar is gonna turn purple, I'm sure. Everything on this guy's table was five dollars. So I'm pretty sure I could get fifteen or twenty after I purple it. And then he had a bunch of half pint milks. This one's from New York, but since it's turning purple, I bought it as well for five dollars. And then I got this Leeksville. These are pretty common, but for five dollars, I figured I'd probably be able to get ten for it. And then the Durham milk. It's super clean. Also five dollars. And then this one. I don't really know where it's from. I'm hoping it's from North Carolina. But it's a very clean slug plated bottle for five bucks. And then a Robert Portner. These are very common in North Carolina. It's just an attic mint condition. Blown in a mold, sparkling clean, no case wear at all. Five bucks. And then a Pepsi from Durham. It's just a common block printed one. Yeah, it's got a big bruise on the base. But still displays pretty well. For five dollars I figured I'd at least be able to double my money eventually. Then another guy had a lot of bottles too and his were mostly five dollars. Got this one for five bucks. It's starting to turn purple. I have no idea where it's from. And then I got a local area, Winston-Salem. It's the only milk I've ever seen embossed sideways in the slug plate. Pretty sure it's a common bottle though. And this one's probably the newer variation of that. Not slug plated, but sideways embossed. And this one, probably from New England area. But for five bucks, I just thought it was a good deal. And this one is also going to turn purple. So that's definitely a good deal at five dollars. Then another Robert Portner that's super sparkling attic mint. In the bigger size. I think I paid four dollars for that one. And then one of these RC bottles with the pyramids. It's from Greensboro. It was only two dollars. After I clean it up, I'm sure I can get seven or eight. Then there was another guy at the flea market with a bunch of bottles as well. This whole case and it says all for ten dollars. Plus there's this whole box of stuff beside it that was included for ten dollars. So I figured that's like 25 cents a piece or less so I'll go ahead and take them. Got a sky high art deco bottle. No city on the bottom though. And your average 1920 orange crush also no city listing got a sparkling clean eight ounce Pepsi that's kind of a rare size a new grape but the paints kind of ruined on it and three of these in the 10 ounce size all in nice condition then three of these in the small seven ounce or six and a half ounce those are kind of scarce in good shape there was also three of these eight ounce Pepsis in mint conditions. Then we got this RC. Not in the best shape, but I'm sure I'll get a few dollars for it. Then we got this Art Deco type bottle. And it is from Marion, South Carolina. Might be worth five or ten dollars. Then we got a Verner's. It's got a lot of wear on it, but I haven't been seeing very many of these lately. Dr. Wells in pretty good shape. Then your yellow labeled knee high from Durham. Then a Big Bill Art Deco type bottle. Should clean up pretty nice. And this box has a lot of junkers in it. But this one, that's not bad. Lime Cola. Well, it does have a big bruise on it. Wait, what do we have here? I see. It's a pretty good looking Art Deco bottle. It looks to be in good shape. Could probably get seven dollars for that. Then a Suncrest. You see these all over the place. But this one says Reedsville, North Carolina. So I'm sure that's fairly scarce. Then a worn out looking True Aid. 
But it does say Raleigh NC on it. Then I got a Broad Rock. That's very interesting because this is the third one of these I've acquired on this trip. No city listed, but I'm pretty sure they got to be from either Reedsville or Leakesville because that's the area that they all came out of and all from different sources. Not too bad about that. That's a small 7 ounce brownie. And the paint's all flaking off. But we got a few more sodas that look pretty good. The Green Caravan. That's a pretty beautiful bottle right there, but I'm sure it's not worth more than seven dollars. Then one of these. And of course it's from Winston-Salem, the most common city to have one from. And then a bracer soda. For some reason I've seen these at bottle shows for some crazy prices like forty dollars. I don't see what makes them any special. <laughs> They're just a five or six dollar bottle in my opinion. If it had a city name on the bottom maybe it'd be worth something but I've never seen one with the city name. And a screw top Lydia E. Pinkham's. Worth about two dollars. Then I got this wide mouth glass lid jar. I've never seen one quite like it before. Too bad there's no lid with it. Then another caravan in the clear variation this time. Well, it turned out to be more of a buying trip than a digging trip. I'm pretty happy with all the stuff I bought. So that was a really great buy for getting all this stuff for $10. And seven or eight other bottles I'm not going to show you because they're too common. And the same guy had this. He was asking $10 for it, but it has a crack in it. So eventually he decided he would let me have it for five. It's cracked right there and it's starting to irradiate up. But sitting on the shelf, that's a pretty nice looking piece for five dollars. Then I went to another shop and they had this jug for five dollars. It doesn't say anything on it, but I was hoping it would turn purple. Then it'd be worth fifteen. Then I went creek walking in the city of Gibsonville. Found a Chiro Cola from a weird little town called Sylvester, Georgia. I find these a lot from this town in the Greensboro area for some reason. They must have bought out that company and had them shipped over so they can use them in the big city of Greensboro. But of course it's got a big base chip and a top chipped off. Then I found a D patent. And of course it's from the common city of Martinsville, Virginia. And then a Suncrest from Reedsville, but the paint's kind of coming off. Then a beautiful clear 1915. Unfortunately it has some serious problems with it. But if you can see that, it says High Point, North Carolina. Would have been a really nice bottle. Then a Bainbridge, Georgia. The late patent office type. Then I found a Lois. 12 ounce paper label. But it is from the town of Graham. That's pretty neat. Don't see very many bottles that say Graham and see on them. They have a big bill. Pretty darn common and it's got a bruise on it. Then I found another patent office. At least it's from Reedsville. I don't have one of these in my inventory yet. Then found a couple bromos. Then last but certainly not least, a very early crown top from Burlington. But of course the top had to be broken off. Yeah, I don't recall ever seeing one of these before. But then again, I don't pay attention to every soda bottle from the whole state. But I'm thinking that was probably a hundred dollar bottle right there. Then I went stomping through the canyons and the vines and creeks and found that. Pretty sure it's a common one, but still it's got to be worth at least ten dollars. Then at another sort of an antique shop, I've 
found all these bottles. Cherry picked these out of a bunch of them and brought them to the counter and he said he would take $15 for them. Got the Doc Marshall's Catara Snuff. It's a blown in the mold snuff jar. Don't see too many that actually have the word snuff on them. And yet another one of these. They're just the average condition Mountain Dew bottle. Hopefully I can get five bucks for it. And a Dr. Jane's expectorant. Then a Pine Hill Berry from Reedsville. Hopefully I'll get ten or twelve out of it. And last but certainly not least, again we have a Christmas Coke. And it's from Reedsville. Pretty darn good shape too. And another Christmas Coke. This one's in really ratty condition. Looks like it sat under the floor of a building for about 75 years. It's going to take a lot of work to get all that scuzz off of it. And it's also a Reedsville. And at, an, at the flea market I also picked up this big half gallon just because it was five dollars and hopefully I'll get ten for it. I went creek walking in Leakesville and found a 1915 Coke. It's got a bit of a chip on the top but I've never found one from Leakesville before so I thought that was pretty neat. And it's got that ancient looking patina on it that you find on a lot of bottles that come out of creeks. I was hoping that would be a rare one but it's in the book as being rather common. I thought I found the town dump and there was almost exclusively soda bottles coming out of it. I found this one as well. It's almost intact. And it is also from the town of Leakesville. If you ever find bottles with this kind of scuzz on them, you can always get it off with some muriatic acid. I keep a bucket with 50% water and muriatic acid on hand at all times and I just soak this for a few hours and brush it off with a toothbrush. Then I found what is sort of a straight sided coke from Leakesville. But of course the top's broken off. And another one. Didn't know how rare these were. I don't think they're that rare really, but I uh, kept a few of the best ones because a rare bottle is worth sawing off and putting a new neck on. And another 1915. Of course it has a broken off top as well. And it's got a different style embossing on the bottom. And another mint cola. But this one is all the way from Washington, North Carolina, which is at least 250 miles away. But of course it's broken off too. And another one of these. With a broken off top. And yet a third mint cola. I couldn't find the source of the dump that these were coming out of. I probed the creek sides, but there was not really a dump. But I did find several hundred broken soda bottle shards. And there's some common stuff that came out of a creek dump in the city of Reedsville. Then I went to another antique shop and they had a whole case of soda bottles and I looked through them. Didn't see anything I wanted. Came back later and looked at them again. Almost left and barely noticed this one as I was leaving. It's a fat 12 ounce embossed knee high, which I don't think I've ever seen one. They're usually skinny 9 or 10 ounces. This one's in mint condition and it was only $3. So obviously, since I don't have one of these, I had to buy it. And here's the Lois bottle after I washed it. It's got texturing all over the back side and smooth on the front. Was that a Pepsi bottle? And here's that busted up high point that's clear 1915 after I washed it. It's 
got a nice thick seam on it sure wish this was in good condition and here's a different variation of a Leaksville milk in the half pint that was also on top of the ground in a different location and here's that Greensboro milk after I washed it got embossing all over it and on this side and on the bottom well the first dig of the season didn't turn out that great but it wasn't a total waste I did buy a lot of good stuff good stuff for resale that is nothing really for my collection Hopefully next time I'll find some better stuff.